So the first part of this teardown is going to be getting the gimbal off and actually we're going to take a look at the gimbal. Since it's off we might as well. And I haven't really seen anyone take a look inside the gimbal and or the 2.3K, 2.5K, 2.7K, whatever the heck it is, camera. The gimbal itself is held on by these anti-vibration dampeners here and it's kind of obscured by the camera. But basically these are soft, almost silicon like rubber and basically the gimbal hangs from them when it's suspended in the air and they do a great job of filtering out the high frequency vibrations that cause jello in your video dji has included these little clips you can see these plastic clips here the purpose of these is to keep the gimbal from separating in the event of a crash because these little balls will just pull out they're very soft and so you don't want your gimbal flying off if you land hard and so these will act as a hard stop now they did a great job because they're really hard to get off. So I'm gonna do something unthinkable here. I'm actually going to snip it with a wire snip. So, oh my gosh. Oh, there we go. Wow. All right, so the next part of removing this gimbal actually involves just separating it. Oh, oh see, I just ruined this one. You can see I tore that little lip off. Rats. In the name of science, sorry. And the gimbal hinges off there with what looks like so there's you can see the black wire there there's three sets of wires there's this black wire there's the plug and then there's this other gray wire so it looks like these black and gray wires go under this sort of cover here so I'm gonna try to figure out what that is right now and while it's here I'm actually just gonna take the time to unplug the main bundle here uh, it's a snapping trap for young players got a clip don't ruin your gimbal okay so that's out now all that's left are these two wires here they're definitely little coax cables I think after further inspection there's these two small Phillips screws I have a hunch that those actually hold that cover on there so I'm gonna pull those off right now see that there so I'm gonna carefully pop these off with a screwdriver they're not easy to damage but do take care to ensure that you don't actually bend the small clip on the male side these ones look to be okay now one quick note this unsurprisingly will not actually fit the tarot gimbal so I don't think you could actually directly fit a tarot gimbal in here which doesn't surprise me at all not a whole lot to see on the top side of the gimbal, you can see the brushless motor, which actually controls the yaw axis there. You get about 45 degrees of articulation each way, which isn't bad at all. We can see our connector. I have no idea how many pins that is. And then you can see our interesting little coax connectors there. So I'm actually most curious to know what the heck these guys are. Let's flip this over and look at the other side. So here's the top side, or the bottom side, viewed from the top. And we can look at the general construction of the three axis gimbal here included with the Phantom. It looks like they're using small ribbon cables to actually cascade the brushless motor connections, which makes sense because they're very light and small. But what I don't like is the ability to rip them. So you can see this, and though it feels fairly tough, these ribbon cables are always susceptible to tearing. And if you do that, I would imagine you're sort of out of luck. I don't know if you could get replacements for that. One thing also worth mentioning is that it's very smooth. I mean, the movements are just incredibly smooth. And actually, you can see there, it's really well balanced to begin with, maybe a little bit camera heavy, um, but everything feels really great. So it's definitely a well-built gimbal. The next thing I'm going to do is take out all of these screws on the bottom plate and see if I can actually detach the main articulating assembly from the circuit board. I'd like to see what's in there. Interestingly, these screws, which you can't really see, are actually still under a thin layer of plastic, just like one of those I'm brand new labels. If I haven't mentioned it enough, this actually hasn't been flown. Also worth noting, every single screw I've taken out on this has been thread locked, caked with Loctite, which is a great practice for something that's always exposed to constant vibrations. Ugh. On this main arm here, there's a tiny little Allen key. 
that I'm gonna need to get out. So I'm gonna undo this slightly. I'm gonna very carefully lift this off because I'm sure the ribbon cable is attached somewhere. <laughs> so there's a small plastic cover here with two of the screws on it. The other two are on the main plate here. I'm gonna set this to the side for now. That's really nerve wracking because the cable on that gimbal arm is always being pulled on regardless of what angle you're coming from. So this is what the gimbal controller looks like. And there's going to also be more. So this is only half of the gimbal controller it looks like. There's also going to be some electronics in the camera, I presume, in order to generate an error signal in which to actually figure out whether the camera's level or not. So for reference, most brushless gimbals actually have a measurement unit on this side or on the craft side and a measurement unit on the camera side and then they take both of those signals and figure out how far out of whack it is and how much it needs to be adjusted so I can do a whole segment on how brushless gimbals work if people are interested but I'll just continue covering this first of all it's a very nice looking circuit board it looks very high quality we've got what looks like a flash or a RAM we've got another chip here I tried to get this label off but it was actually gunked over you can see a color difference. They kind of brushed around the components here with a glossy finish. I don't know. I don't really know what it is. We've got an optocoupler. I can tell by the height. And that's most definitely isolating the USB from the rest of the gimbal. And actually, it, there's a mark here, USB on that silk screen. And then here we've got three chips and then three more small chips. I don't know what those are. These could be gyros. They could be... Yeah, too many pins to be a MOSFET. My guess is these are triple gyro accelerometer, something, something, which um, most likely generate the reference. I'm going to pop these two screws off here, and we can see if we can get to the backside. As a note, it's like impossible to keep this thing in frame because it just spins on the brushless motor. <laughs> ah! It's blurry, but you can see the other ribbon cable there. So I'm going to very carefully detach that right now. So this is the bottom part of our plastic. Not much to see here. Just that last yaw axis brushless motor. And here is what I'm interested in. So this is the front or back side, I guess, depending on how you look at it, of the gimbal controller. And very interestingly, there's a ton of stuff under like this can, an RF, I would presume a shielding can. And I have no idea what DJI would have on here that's actually running at RF frequencies. Perhaps the Wi-Fi for the video transmitter. I guess that's the only thing that I can think of is that the video signal transmission is actually done on the gimbal controller. And it's likely, I guess. I don't actually know what would be taking place under this can. And if I wasn't interested and actually putting this back together and using this thing, you know, flying it for the first time, I would rip this can off, but it's gunked all, they did the same gunk thing. I don't know what that, if that's their QA system or what, but they gunked all along it and it actually looks to be edge soldered as is usually the case with these guys. So that's about all I can really get there. Disappointingly, okay, come on, I'm being complaining here, but disappointingly enough, there's a chip here, which I presume is a USB controller, maybe, uh, or just a general purpose micro. And they actually scraped and or painted the part number off. What the heck? Come on. After thinking about it a little, a little bit more, I, my best guess is that the video transmission actually takes place on this under those shielding cans. I can't think of anything else that would actually be running at RF. So now I'm going to look at the camera. I'm going to pop these back screws off here. This could go horribly wrong, by the way, in about 10 million ways. Okay, so I'm going to very carefully try lifting this. I have no idea how this comes out, by the way. Hey, okay. Excuse the blown out lighting. I turned up the exposure here for one main reason. I don't know if you can see, it's hard to read, but the main chip in the camera for the DJI Phantom is an Amberella chip. So this is the same chip manufacturer that GoPro actually uses, and these Amberella chips are very good. They're well, well known. 
They're definitely expensive, but they do a great job. Uh, they're all-in-one camera controllers, image processors, and this is actually an Alpida. Alpida, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. It's a Japanese semiconductor company which specializes in, you guessed it, RAM. So they build, let's see, DDR3, LPDDR3, LPDDR2, and GDDR5 RAM. So my guess is this is going to be the video RAM for the actual camera. Alongside that, the only other noticeable thing here, and I'm not going to pry this board out. I'm sorry, I just don't want to actually ruin this. We can see here that we've got three small surface mount chips, which greatly appear to be the gyros and accelerometers that the camera uses and the gimbal use to self-write the gimbal there. So overall, it's very impressive that they managed to squeeze a umbrella controller chip, an image sensor. Obviously, on the back side of this, there will be an image sensor, but that's also why I'm wary of pulling this out. I don't want to expose that image sensor and get something on it. Now we can notice that next to almost every one of these chips, there's an inductor and a capacitor. So my guess is they're very heavily filtering the power in order to get clean reference signals for these gyros and accelerometers. That's very important in order to get a good reading out of these things. On these edges, there's just going to be a small circuit board and the actual mounting to the brushless gimbal. There's not really any, even any driver hardware on there, I'm sure. I can't say it enough. I mean, DJI, their hardware is impeccable. And over three generations of the Phantom, they've really had the ability to tune and build this up. I wouldn't doubt if this camera was in the works for two or even three years. And one other small note before I slide this off screen, we can actually see that this back plate is made out of CNC aluminum and it's got this nice thermal pad on there, which is no doubt just to heat sink the Amberella chip and the video RAM. All in all, a really impressive piece of electronics from DJI. That's really all I have for the gimbal itself. There's going to be a bunch more parts of this teardown. Like I said, there's no way I can fit it all into one. I'm definitely going to also take a look inside the main quad and we can see how that's built up as well as I would like to look at the remote and if I can, if I can get it open without ruining it, I really want to take a look inside the intelligent battery. As always, leave me your thoughts. Wish me luck in getting this thing back together.